Hello and welcome to Run Testers. My name's Nick, and in this video we're going to be comparing the Brooks Ghost 15 and the Brooks Glycerin 20. So the Ghost and the Glycerin are both very popular running shoes within Brooks's lineup. They're among the most popular running shoes in the world, the kind of shoes that you slip on in a running store and you stick with forever. And they've both had fairly big updates this year, so we thought it'd be worth comparing them and see which we really prefer as a daily trainer or cushioned running shoe. So the Glycerin 20 is the more expensive shoe, it's £155 in the UK, $106 in the US, whereas the Ghost is £130 or $140. Glycerin is a slightly heavier shoe as well, it's 314 grams or 11 ounces in my UK size 9, whereas the Ghost is 200. 97 grams or 10.5 ounces. Ghost has the higher drop at 12 millimeters, whereas it's 10 millimeters in the glycerin, which has a heel stack height of 34 that drops to 24 at the forefoot, whereas the Ghost starts at 35 millimeters at the heel and drops to 23 millimeters at the forefoot. There's a lot of similarities in the design of the two shoes, uh, including the upper, which is an engineered mesh on both with substantial amounts of padding around the tongue and collar there. It's a really signature part of uh, Brooks shoes that when you step in, it feels really comfortable uh, as you slip your foot in, and they've both got uh, added stability around the heel there with some plastic heel counters. Then the outsoles are also very similar, you've got good amount of rubber coverage, that kind of segmented design at the back there to try and produce a, uh, a flowing ride and actually it's the Ghost that has the thicker amount of rubber on the outsole, so a really thick chunk of rubber on the outsole there. Both of them are very durable and grip really well uh, in all conditions. Then the midsole, there are big differences between the two shoes, so they've both got new foams in the midsole this year but the Glycerin 20 has got Brooks's DNA Loft version 3 foam. It's a super critical nitrogen infused foam. We first saw it on the Aurora BL shoe and it's lighter, more responsive than the previous DNA Loft foam that was used in the Glycerin. Whereas the Ghost also got a DNA Loft update, but this is now a new version of DNA Loft version 2. It's a blend of rubber air and EVA foam, again, to try and create a lighter, poppier feeling than on past version of the shoe. But it's just interesting that Brooks has opted for different midsole foams on these two shoes, which really does contribute to creating a very different feel on the run when using these two shoes. All right, I've got Tom with me now. Let's talk fit, Tom. These shoes, I mean, they fit true. They're the same fit. They fit true to size, right? Yeah, it's basically <laughs> the same shoe. But what I would say is that the the Glycerin Twenty just feels a little bit more. I mean, it's, it's by no means like a tight, narrow shoe or anything. But I just feel there's a bit more room in the the Ghost Fifteen. Still true to size, but just worth noticing. If you've got a bigger foot, it might be. A little bit, bit more roomy. Yeah, yeah. And the main thing with them is when you slip them on, it's so padded at the back and comfortable. You, know, you never want to take them off. But yeah, I'm completely true to size in both of these shoes. All right, next up, we've got the run test. Interestingly, these are two shoes in uh, Brooks's range, two very popular shoes, long running shoes, and a lot of fairly similar characteristics. But it's fair to say you have quite a different experience of these two shoes, Tom. Oh, yes. <laughs> very different, very different. Selling. Uh, so, I mean, the Brooks Lister Intervention we've talked about many, many times. We've compared it with a lot of the best cushion shoes out at the moment, things like the Triumph 20. Um, and it comes up, it's very high on the list of great cushion shoes, especially with the updates that have been made to the more the, to the recent version. So that new nitrogen infused midsole foam. It's just a very, it's so comfortable to run in. It's lovely level of cushioning, but not too much. It's not like the softest shoe around. It's still a nice balance. Um, and it's also, I've raced in this shoe, um, not on purpose, but I didn't have any other shoes with me. Uh, I raced in it and it wasn't too bad. It's it, it's not, I wouldn't say it's the most versatile shoe in the world, but it's still, there's a bit more to the Brooks Glycerin Trinity than a lot of cushion shoes out there. Uh, and, and its predecessors as well. Um, now, the Ghost 15, now I tried the Ghost 14 ages ago and I didn't mind it too much. It was fine. Um, I think at the time I was doing a lot of, sort of slow, uh, easy runs um, and I wasn't really training properly. And I think it, it was fine for that. It, I, I did, when you don't have any expectations of what this, the, the, the Ghost does, um, it's, not, it's not massively disappointing. Um, but I've been running the Great Ghost 15 and I've tried a few different runs in it so picking up the pace a little bit doing a bit more interval training and things and I don't know if it's that there's so many other great shoes out at the moment especially things like the Brooks Lister in 20 but it, it was just very dull for me it just didn't really seem to just do anything um I've actually just come back from running it and it was it was fine but I just got nothing from it yeah it, it's interesting that these two shoes, the way they developed over the, the most recent generation, it's got, both of them have new midsoles in theory, but Brooks gave the nitrogen-infused midsole to the Glycerin 20, the DNA Loft version 3, and 
the Ghost 15 got a new version of DNA Loft version 2, which I think it has got a bit of some kind of air infused in it, but the ride is it is a bit like night and day. Like It's really weird because they, they are designed for similar jobs. You know, big, plush, comfortable shoes. You can cruise around in them. This is a bit, this one's slightly more cushioned and more premium. It's a more expensive shoe in the line, but the ride is just fantastic. I really love this foam. Like, what always sticks out to me is just the way it, throughout a run, just stays the same. The feeling is there. It's giving you a little bit of response back. Um, it's comfortable. It's not overriding and it just works nicely. And at the end of a run, it feels fantastic. It's it's not dulled out or bottomed out or anything like that. And you always just want to run a couple of extra kilometers in the shoe. And I found it you know, for a cushion shoe quite versatile. Like ticking from easy to steady paces in the shoe was easy on long runs in particular. I remember really clearly one day going out and it going, this version far superior to the previous glycerin on that front, which is always a nice cushion shoe, great for cruising around it. But this, I was just cruising in it. And then the last five miles of the run, I picked them up to a decent pace and just felt comfortable, easy in this shoe to do. And the Ghost, in theory, is the slightly lighter shoe. It's billed more as a daily trainer shoe, but it doesn't have that versatility. Like dibbly dobbling around in it, you know, it's fine. It's, you know, you can, you can chunk around. It's got a good outsole. It will serve you fine on your easy runs, but I don't think it's tall versatile. I really didn't enjoy trying to pick up the pace in this shoe. It's it's got clunky geometry. It's got a slightly higher drop than the the um, than the glycerin. It's 12 millimeters versus 10. And I do find it very slappy and just doesn't give you a lot back. I think it protects you. You, you know, the impact is absorbed nicely by the foam of running, but you're not getting any kind of response, any kind of bounce out of that midsole, I find. And it's, it's just kind of there. It's a, it's, it is a shoe. Yeah, that would be, this, this is a shoe, whereas this is, this is a shoe. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I think you've hit it on the head there. Uh, uh, where they're, originally, when these two shoes were released, they weren't really meant to be similar shoes. Um, but as the, as they've sort of merged together, the Glycerin 20 has become more versatile. It's become better at doing things that are maybe far beyond just being a big cushion shoe. The Ghost has, has just sort of stayed where it is. And in reality, after all those years, it's it's really it is, really is just a sort of standard cushion shoe now. I wouldn't class it against any daily trainer that we've tested as a daily trainer. Um, and, e- and equally, I, I wouldn't class it as a particularly good cushion shoe. Um, it's almost like it's a, a shoe that's sort of it's one of those one of those shoes, we've seen it with a few brands actually where it's like they're a legacy shoe that sort of is still the same as it was like a few generations ago and you know some people like that I, I think it's like it it's probably it's not a disappoint if you're in, like a beginner runner or you're used to the shoe it's fine, like the run I just did in it, I, I, I mean, I, I wasn't like cursing the whole way, going, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. I was just thinking, I just wish I had another shoe on. Um, yeah. it's, it's just, I, I just think there's so many good shoes that come out, have been coming out recently in the daily shoe and the cushion shoe world that to then release this one, and it is still quite an expensive shoe, it's mm. like, it's not really, doesn't really, I don't see where it sits anymore, basically. Yeah, it, I mean, people have been using the Ghost for a long time. They like it. It's reliable. It is very good for taking the impact of running away. And the higher drop, which is now unusually high for the running shoe market, um, does help if you're a heel striker like myself and you want to lessen the impact on your calves. I think the higher drop will help with that. I remember using the shoe and I was also testing the Zero Drop Ultra Vanish Carbon at the same time. And my calves are getting a bit you know, tired from using a Zero Drop shoe. So it was nice to pop on a 12 millimeter drop shoe. But you go and pull these two shoes on in a running shop and stand there, they're going to feel fantastic. They both feel really comfortable, really padded. You think, oh, these are great. But they do, and in the past, the difference between running in them wouldn't have been that great. But now, I think it is, and it's, it's especially as you push to longer distances or run more regularly in it. I think the uh, the midsole and the glycerin just gives you a lot more. Uh, whereas the Brooks is fine; it's going to be there. It's going to last a long time. It's got a good outsole, but that's all. Say, that's all true of the glycerin as well. And the ride is just simply more enjoyable, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, one last thing I'll just add to that is, uh, it's something that we probably miss a bit on the run testers. I think. That midsole foam is a little bit sturdier, a little bit firmer. There's a little bit more density to it than you get in the Brooks Glycerin Twenty. Uh, it doesn't. That doesn't help me. It doesn't help you. But maybe it's if you're a heavy runner, you might get a little bit more out of it. I don't know if that's true, but um, I, I I can see that. It, even even after the runs I've done in it, I can see it sort of loosening up a little bit uh, on some of the runs. So maybe maybe it's a shoe that is sort of tailored more towards lots of different people as opposed to uh, other shoes that are out there. Yeah, it's true. I, I, I do think that is the case. It does do that job real well. I do think the glycerin will kind of do that job as well. Yes, and uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, and it's not, it's not, and it, both of them are stable 
for neutral shoes not, there's not massive stability elements there though you can get stability versions of uh, the glycerin which will give you the guide rails as well but i yeah i do think they've ended up like you say merging to do shoes that do quite a similar job and i just think now the glycerin does it a lot better and it is more expensive but the, like you say the ghost isn't cheap so you probably probably pay the extra well we got a bit of verdicty in the run test there tom so we'll try and keep this pretty yeah. fair um, i think this is a pretty Easy choice, right? I mean, it's a bit more expensive, but I, I would recommend the Glycerin 100% out of these two shoes. Yeah, definitely. Um, the only the only thing I, I would say is that I think the Brooks Ghost is it's sort of got more expensive over time, and it really should sit alongside something like the Nike Pegasus, just because at 100 pounds, 110 pounds, whatever, it's a solid shoe I, at that price. But now it's 130. It's just there's there's shoes that are far superior that cost that much, um, and the Brooks Glycerin may be a bit more money, uh, but it is a fantastic shoe that you can't go wrong with. Whereas the Ghost 15 is a very average shoe that you can go wrong with. Yeah, if you're a long-term fan of the Ghost, the 15 will tick the boxes that it's ticked in the past. But I, if you're a fan of the Ghost, I can't see why you wouldn't like the Glycerin. Uh, I don't think there's much difference between them. It's just, but it, then you've got the better ride. So I, I do think if you can find it at a similar price, I mean Brooks has got the launch, which is cheaper, which maybe cuts off that hundred pound mark. But that is a firmer shoe, a bit more. You know, a bit more orientated to do a lot of different jobs than the Ghost. Ghost is more cushioned, but yeah, like you say, I think at its price, the Ghost is outclassed by lots of shoes. Whereas the Glycerin, in that premium money no object cushion category, stands up very well. It's, it's probably my one of my favourite shoes in that category. Although I got yeah, a bit yeah. obsessed with the Sockney Tempest in the end of the <laughs> last year. <didn't> <laughs> um, it's, it's definitely top five. Yeah, exactly. Um, whereas the Ghost <laughs> simply isn't. So yeah, looking in the Brooks range, it's more expensive for a reason. So it's a it's a better shoe. Um, and I we'll have to see what the updates come down the line with them, what they start doing with these phones. But the Glycerin got a really good update this year that really really stands out. Mm -hmm.